All right, so next one is I silk. It's the fun GUI for silk. So the children's safe version. Uh, let's see, so it's a subset of the command line tools. There's a Windows installer and build instructions. You want to compile it on Linux or uh, Mac OS. Um, however, though, you do have to grab uh, this one particular file. I think I do the next slide when I put it in there. Um, so here's what it kind of looks like when you get it running. I'll walk it through with you guys. Here it is. So this, this um, GOIP2CC map, that is not really well documented. So you have to go on their site and grab that and build it. I'm getting a lot of weird <coughs> errors. So, um, so iSilk works, it basically has an SSH connection to a silk box. So in this case, we're going on local host. All the settings should be set for you. Um, if you're building it yourself, you're going to have to generate an SSH, SSH key pair. It has to be the DSA version. Doesn't say they have documentation for those. Yep. For the IP to country map? Yes. That you're grabbing off and set updated, and can you integrate that with other services that would provide you? Well, that's a great question. So you could probably just make a file of this, but it expects that it'll, it'll bark if that, uh, that's not there. I grabbed the free one off of whatever the website that hosts it. I grabbed that one. Um, if you had more updated ones, if you have this one, the, the, the output they're look, it's looking for, I think they're looking just for like a raw CSV file, <coughs> then it should be good. And was your other question why didn't I would integrate with other services? Right, you could integrate it with uh, like the, I forget the company, uh, like GIP, GeoCity. Okay. I don't know. Um, so the it is do change. Yeah. Uh, because all it's doing is looking for the static file at the end of the day. So if you had a way of converting that automatically, or maybe just appending to the current one. Okay. I don't know. It, it, you, I don't know what it currently does, but they used to use Mac, the free Mac client. Yes, that's what I grabbed. Yep. That sounds right. So whatever format that. that yeah. So um, <laughs> that subset of the uh, silk commands, how Often do you find yourself where you're in ISIL doing something and you realize you just can't get the results you're trying to get, you got to fall back. On so the this. scanning one, some of the more uh, the bagging, I, uh, I never did those by ISIL. You can do, like, you make it on a plugin, which essentially you could just give it, you could make it there. Uh, so probably as, a need, as needed basis, I usually would start with still ISIL and then move to silk as needed. But ISIL does have file size limits. So if it's a really large file and you're doing a lot of RW stats or other weird um, things, it will crash. So, so if it crashed, then I would go to silk. Okay. Or just break it up with RW filter and then move it back into my silk. So I still have fun stuff. So um, well, we're going to do the slide. So I have slides in case everything died. So Mike, I'm going to switch with you. Unless you want to walk through it. No. No. Okay. Yeah, I'll try. Can everyone hear me in this back corner? Okay. Okay, that is yes. Okay. All right, so if you go to, I know it's not Unix convention, but if you go to your home slash student slash application folder, and you go to the ISIL directory, you'll see some fun files here. It's really simple. You're just going to do python isilk.py. Any questions? What's the file? You guys are wrong. Hit enter, and a beautiful GUI will start to pop up. You can watch fun Python in the background. So let's ask for a password. Um, I've been using the same password for everything. And I already made one. Uh, this is probably will be blank for you, so you're just going to click new. And we'll name this um, fun net flow of the class. And OK. So is everyone at this point? Yeah. Okay. So what was the command line to start? 
Uh, just Python and then isilk.py should be in the home student applications isilk folder. So what you're going to do is go up to toolbar up here, file, import remote problem set, and you'll see two. Um, we'll do, let's see, italk order for Oculo file. So these were already created in silk. Hit OK, and I'll start importing it. Just slow down a bit. Yeah, okay. sorry about that. Uh, yeah. What was that? So you go up um, the previous one. I think I have it up here. Uh, up here. So if you go to the file, and you'll see something called a port remote data file. There should be two. Um, just import the, I believe it's the first one, the border file. It should be the second one. The different data types. Yeah. And I'll talk about the data set in a little bit. So we're going to very quickly kind of cruise through the same kind of commands we talked about before, but this will allow us to visualize the data in several different ways, just as a reinforcement. Um, yes, Veronica. I don't see the so menu. Pardon? I don't see menu. Oh, so have oh, yes. So what you got to do, so uh, Ubuntu uses this strange Unity interface that whoever pays all the money likes. You have to go up to the menu itself in ISIL to make it pop up. Uh, okay. So right. you got to click. Oh, on here. So with ISIL highlighted, like Mac OS X, then you go up to the menu and then file, and then you'll see import data, remote data set file. Which file were we reading for you? The second one, I believe it's iTalk order. You can do the other ones, it doesn't matter. Just as we're going along, you all have the same result. So it's, is it under the remote? Problem set? Yep. Yep. Remote data. yep. Import remote, uh, remote data file. And then two should pop up. Would that be under the remote problem sets or the my problem sets? Uh, the remote ones. So if you go back, uh, if you're just getting into it, you might have to do create a new one uh, here. Okay. And just name it whatever you want. It'll be this one right here. I'm sorry, how do you get to the import proper data or remote data file? Yeah, so what do you do? Uh, the same question that Veronica had. So when you have ISOC highlighted, you go up to the top and you'll see a file. Here's highlighted. You go down to import remote data file. All the way up to the top. Put your mouse up there and then yeah. it'll show uh, okay. Yeah, for the black bar, uh, black horizontal bars. Got it. Yeah, the you need any interfaces. And which one are we after? The iTalk inset? Uh, the border one. Second one. The border one. Yeah. And then just put that in the new port and it'll take a uh, 15 seconds. Okay. So once it's finished importing, you'll see here that you'll see that importing query result. Now we can actually start doing things with it. So we'll do RW unique. So if you see our fun here. So you see the unique one? Very simple. Just click on it. And all those flags which Mike showed, you have it right here. And note on the bottom, right here, you'll actually see the silk command that's running. So it's a nice way to kind of reinforce and learn as well. Um, so say we want to sort everything by, I don't know, source IP <coughs> and uh, by bytes and packets. You can click all these ones. I'll say, hey, you know, this is test one. So you say run analysis. And then you click remote file report. And I'll say it'll pull that down. And this full screen. Bam, you have all those nice neat results here. And the nice thing about this, you can also sort it different ways. If you want to sort it by source IP, you want to sort it by your bytes, you can do it all within ISO. And the other nice feature is you can do graphics. So if you click your result and then you click quick graph. 
Ta-da, very pretty, pretty Game Boy color kind of color scheme here. <laughs> this is good when you get into like timeline information a little bit later on. And notice, so remember in the other one I did byte and packets, each graph is different. So, it's worthwhile. If you have to explain things, things of that nature. That was that one. So, now we click back on uh, important query result. Okay. And we're going to go through another tool where we can split RW stats. Wait, what did you click on to get back to the down to graph? Uh, so it's just uh, like an explore window on the left here. So you just click up top, bring important query result. Right. Now, personally, I close the other ones, but I have ADHD, I get distracted. But, uh, so I just then do, next one I'm going to do is stats. We can do top and bottom, just like Mike did before. So if I want to do source, IP, and source reports, do it by flow records, doesn't really matter. We're just kind of playing with the tools right now. Um, I'll name this RW stats uh, test one and run an out. And it failed. I don't know. So we'll try it different. We'll just do source IP and bytes. This one worked. So if you click the remote file, pull it down, and you can do a quick graph from there as well. Okay. And again, the, when you do these, uh, when you first start running, I'll show you where this command is. We did stats, we did graphs, count. If you have any questions, shout them out, and I'm going through this pretty quick. Um, so RW count, the same thing. Notice the command right here, say the bin size. Right. I mentioned the load schemes earlier, so by default, our given count is going to assume your flow is evenly distributed uh, you know, over the time span instead of keeping the bytes in the packets. Uh, you can mess with that on the command line, but here it's just the, the primary uh, fault. And you can get a good quick craft. Well, this is craft, and just scroll down so I see a big peak on the left in terms of where I click on that and get more detailed information. Unfortunately, not. You'd have to do RW filter for that time span. And then drill down from there. So if this is like this peak, you know, for multiple days, you have to filter it down. Yeah, you'd have to unfortunately you have to do it by time. Um, you can go back your your table view and actually look and see. Yeah, if it's small enough. So what I like to do with ISO, if I do usually table view to kind of figure out what I really care about, either by time or IP information, of course, I do the filter, and then I go over the additional one. So say if we want to do this one, I believe I can then go and do. Uh, you can filter first, so you can do uh, certain IPs that we care about, right? You can do certain ports, destination, and then once you do that filter, uh, so say we do one here. Uh, I say I only care about port uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, unlock one, two, three, four, five. And bus. If you're unfamiliar with NetBus, it's a really simple project and it's used in this. So now I filter on that port and then I can do uh, stats, for example, from analysis. And I have stats on that. Or what was the last one did? RW count. So this is an example of how you do that initial filter and then and you can do filters within filters. So if you want to keep breaking this down, you can do that as well. So here's this is when the so you can see uh, you know when they really start using this particular Trojan in the competition this time frame. And if you go to the filter one up here. Anyway, you can always do that. So that'd be another example. So if you can't find how to do filtering by time or you want to do it, you can always do it in silk. 
make your separate file, and then load that file to the ISO. Pretty sure you can do it by time. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, there's also the ability to do. So they have the manual links right here as well. If you have any questions on how to use any of these links. So going back to our fun slides. So the data for these ones is from the ITOC competition. And if you're curious about this competition or any PDFs on it, there's a paper on it as well. So you can kind of read or digest summary. This part of my over here. Is there was NSA Red Team and their IP scheme is 10.2. And then you had all these um, United States Academies. So the Naval Academy, the Air Force Academy, the Coast Guard Academy, they each got their own simulated enterprise network. Okay? So next slide. And each one had a web server, a DNS server, a Jabber server, an email server, and multiple client PCs. And each team had a different uh, subnet. So 10, six, uh, so 60 is one team, 50 is another team, 30 is another team, etc. Next slide. So there's a lot of fun things in that data traffic that I want you guys to kind of play with and go through. So you saw port 12345. That was um, that was Trojan. You can see there's plenty of scanning activity and SIN scans. And um, so yeah, load up ISO and see if you can find some of this port scanning behavior or any kind of strange TCP flags. If you have any questions on any of the specific tools, let me know. Um, and yeah, so try that for a little bit. It, it's very, very noisy traffic. You should be able to find it. Use a combination of silk and ISO. If you want to use YAC, more than welcome to. So this is the border data we already have loaded. Yep, yep. And there's also, so there's two taps from that competition. One was on the NSA side, one was on the border side. You're welcome to load both and kind of play with it and see what you find. And figure out which tool you prefer better. Okay. Have fun. If you have any questions, go ahead and shoot it out.